Hello, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue with our acid and base chapter. Uh, we're actually going to skip ahead a couple of pages if you're using my notes. And we're going to go to neutralization reactions today. We have a lab coming up soon and we need to be able to write uh, neutralization reactions um, and be able to do some stoichiometry that involve neutralization reactions. Now, the first thing you have to know here is that this will feel like it's somewhat of a review because what we're about to do are all double replacement reactions. So we've actually done this uh, much earlier in the year. We've done several examples where we have to predict what the products are and then balance an equation. We're also going to review how to write ionic and net ionic equations as it applies to neutralization reactions. So if you say to yourself as you're going through this video, I think I've got the wrong video. We did this a long time ago. In reality, yes, we did. This is a nice little review, but we're applying it to our acid and base chapter. Now, uh, a couple of things you need to know uh, before you do uh, you write neutralization reactions. First of all, um, you need to know your strong acids and bases. Okay, so let me make a little list over here that we're going to refer to today as we do these. Uh, first of all, let's list our strong acids. Now, if you were to go back just a couple pages in your notes, we listed six strong acids. We're just going to list those again. Uh, there's hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. You can see these are three binary acids. Uh, the other strong acids are oxyacids. We have um, HClO4, perchloric acid. We have HNO3, nitric acid. And H2SO4. Now, uh, that's sulfuric acid. You need to remember that strong acids dissociate 100% of the time when they're placed in water. Now, you may have forgotten what the term dissociate means. Dissociate means is that they're going to split up into hydronium ions and their negative ion 100% of the time. For instance, if I put HCl in water, I end up forming um, H3O+, plus, which you know we often write as H+, plus, and Cl negatives. And dissolve the water. And that arrow goes one way, meaning that this dissociates or splits up into H plus hydronium ions and chloride ions all the time. Now contrast that with weak acids. Weak acids stick together most of the time. They do not dissociate. Okay? Now, I'm also going to list our strong bases. And these are very similar to strong acids in that they dissociate 100% of the time. Um, they are the group one metal hydroxides. So we have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. Hydroxide. Along with calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, and strontium hydroxide. These bases, when you place them in water, will dissociate into the metal ions and hydroxide ions 100% of the time. Weak bases, remember, they stick together. They don't dissociate very much. So we're going to use this list as we write neutralization reactions, okay? And you're going to have to memorize these. They're, it's pretty easy to memorize the strong acids and strong bases. The reason I have you do that is because all other acids and bases are weak. So if you, lose, if you learn these few strong ones, you'll know if I give you the name of an acid or a base, whether it's strong or weak. For instance, if I said acetic acid, is that a strong or weak acid? Well, you'd know that it's a weak acid because it's not listed as one of our strongs. Okay? So, here we go. Now let's write the molecular equation for sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. Uh, sodium's positive one, chloride's negative one. So we form NaCl, and according to your solubility rules, that's soluble in water. And H gets together with OH to form water. We'll put an L after that. Water does not dissolve very well in water. Um, so we'll write a liquid in that they pretty much stick together. Now, ionically, remember we want to write them as they really are, as we would see them if we could see them in a water solution. Since sodium hydroxide is a group 1 hydroxide, sodium's in group 1, it will dissociate 100% of the time. So I would write it as Na plus 
AQ and OH minuses AQ. Water surrounds those ions and separates them from each other. Plus hydrochloric acid, you'll notice that that's one of our strong acids. So that dissociates 100% of the time into H plus AQ and Cl minus AQ. Now our products we're going to handle pretty much the same way. If it's a soluble ionic compound, we'll dissociate it into its ions. So sodium chloride soluble. So that dissociates into sodium ions and chloride ions. And water, like we just said, sticks together. Water does not dissolve very well in water. So we have our ionic equation here. <clears throat> now, to get to our net ionic, we need to cross off our spectators. Remember, those are the ones that are the same on both sides. They really don't react. So what's the same on both sides? Take a look. Yeah. We've got chlorides that are the same. Anything else? And the sodiums are the same. Very good. Now whatever's left over, we're going to write down into our net ionic. So we have OH minus is left on the reactant side and our hydronium ions left on the reactant side. On the product side, we just have water. So this is my net ionic equation for example number one. And notice that was between a strong base and a strong acid. It simply um, reduces down to OH minus and H plus makes water. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, the next one involves a weak acid. And you're going to see we're going to handle that just a tiny bit differently. So let's just jump right into it. KOH and nitrous acid. Double replacement again. So K and H are going to switch partners. K is positive one. NO2 is negative one. So we make KNO2. And according to our solubility rules, potassium compounds are soluble. And H and OH. So we make water. So you'll notice for all of these, we're going to make a salt and water during the reaction. Now it's balanced. So let's write the ionic equation. Potassium hydroxide. That's another group 1 hydroxide. Potassium's in group 1. So we're going to dissociate it. This K plus ions and hydroxide ions. Nitrous acid is not a strong acid. Nitric is, but nitrous is not on my list at all. So it must be a weak acid. And weak acids do not dissociate very well. They dissolve as molecules. So we don't separate them in our ionic equation. Remember, if it's weak, they stick together most of the time. So we write it, stuck together. We don't dissociate it. KNO2 is soluble, so that splits up into potassium ions and nitrite ions. And water, once again, sticks together. So we have our ionic. Are there as many spectators this time? What are they? Do you see them? Yeah, the K pluses are spectators, aren't they? The nitrites are not. You see how it's NO2 negative here, but on the other side it's stuck to a proton? So they're not the same, so we cannot cancel them out. So let's write what's left. We have hydroxides and nitrous acid reacting to form nitrite ions and water. So that's the net ionic equation. And this is what we have when we react a strong base with a weak acid. Okay, next up. Um, we have a weak base and a strong acid. So we have ammonium hydroxide and nitric acid. So double replacement again. Ammonium is one plus, nitrate's one ne uh, nitrate is one negative. So that's NH4, NO3, and that's soluble. And H and OH get together again. Okay, now. Ammonium hydroxide is not one of my strong bases. It's not a group 1 hydroxide, and obviously it's not one of these. So I'm going to write it together. Now, when we get a bit further, a lot of chemists don't write ammonium hydroxide like this. But just for simplicity's sake, we're going to write it stuck together as NH4OH. Um, 
We might talk about why later, but just let's keep it simple and we'll write it stuck together because we'll just consider it a very weak base, which it is, and the ions will stick together. They don't dissociate. Nitric acid is a strong acid. See, it's one of my strongs right there, HNO3. So it dissociates into ions. Ammonium nitrate soluble, so we'll dissociate that into ions. And water sticks together. Now my spectators, looks like we have my nitrates on both sides. And that's it. So the net ionic equation would be NH4OH. And if we add a proton to that, that remains on the left side. We end up with NH4 pluses, and oh, that's AQ, and H2O liquid. Now, just to make this look prettier, I'm going to show you the way a real chemist would write this net ionic. Don't worry about why for right now. I prefer NH3 and H pluses form NH4 plus. So, I like that one. Don't worry about it. If you give me this one for right now, that's just fine. Okay? All right, let's do one more. <clears throat> we have potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Now you'll notice that there's two protons here and only one hydroxide. And that's different. In all my others, we had one proton and one hydroxide, one proton and one hydroxide, one proton and one hydroxide. Here, we've got two protons and one hydroxide. So this is going to be a little bit different. Let's do the reaction. Potassium and sulfate will get together. Potassium is 1 plus. Sulfate is 2 negative. So we form K2SO4, which is soluble, and water. Now, do you see the problem? It's not balanced. It's not 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 like we saw earlier. We need two potassiums on this side. So we're going to put a 2 there. And that gives us two plus two more, four hydrogens. So I've got to put a two there. Okay, so now we have a two to one ratio. So let's write that ionically. Potassium hydroxide is a group one hydroxide. So it dissociates. And we're going to get two K pluses because we have two potassium hydroxides and two hydroxide ions. H2SO4 is a strong acid. We will dissociate both of those protons. Uh, just for the sake of ease for right now, it will, we will split off both protons and a sulfate. On the other side, potassium sulfate soluble. So we have two potassiums and a sulfate and our two waters. Okay, take a look. We got a couple spectators, don't we? What are they? Do you see them? Sulfates are gone. And the potassium ions are gone, aren't they, as well? So we're down to two OH negatives remaining, two H pluses remaining, and two waters remaining. Now we could write that as one to one to one. He wrote OH minus and H plus forms 1H2O. That is even better because 2 to 2 to 2 reduces down to 1 to 1 to 1. Okay, so there are four neutralization reactions for you. Now, the next video, maybe I'll do a couple from your homework and then we're going to get into quantitative neutralization. And here we're going to do some stoichiometry. So look forward to that, okay? Bye-bye.